have an idea. Welcome into Squad Ops One Life Events. Today we have Operation Rawhide. 
this is a pretty straightforward operation. I wouldn't say simple because none of these operations are ever simple. Because, you know, things happen. I'm B Car and uh, flying solo today with my multi stream producer, Shadowed Ritual. We're going to get started with a little explanation of what this is all about. So, as we can see on our map, we have a red circle that says village. In that village, there is a radio intercept fob, and they are disrupting communications for the U.S. forces in the area. U.S. forces stationed at this airfield are going to move out, and they're going to attempt to take down that fob. That's the grand that's the grand strategy of this all. It's basically a north to south push. Um, however, the village is a complicated, dense area of buildings and limited egress with the um, or should I say limited ingress with the number of bridges that are around and the water or the river that is pretty deep. It's difficult to get in, but once you're in, then you're in, you know, door-to-door -door urban warfare. And there's going to be a whole platoon here defending the area. This is the village area. There's, from the most likely, I wouldn't say most likely, let me, let me rephrase that. From the direct route, there's this uh, sort of fork in the road with two bridges that they can cross you cross the uh, western bridge you're sort of straight into very dense fighting situation you can still maneuver around these buildings but you're going to have to go through them at some point buildings have plenty of cover for insurgents that are going to be hiding here and the buildings that are further inside the village as you can see second level external roof access like the stairs built in the, this building here and you can see by the sandbags insurgents have already made themselves at home now let's see here's the radio this is actually the objective for the u.s forces they're going to have to destroy this radio and it's pretty hidden you can see the uh the two-story building here if you've played squad before, you're familiar with this type. There's two entrances to the building, I think. Yep. And then there's one staircase that goes up. If I don't fly out the roof. One staircase that goes up and the radio is here. This is going to be very a very well-defended position because of all the windows on the second floor that can look at all of the entrances to this little walled off compound. Let's get a bird's eye view of this guy. I'm in its storm. I grabbed it. And it's pretty limited ingress to this particular I'm gonna stop using that word too. To this tuck to this compound. Uh let's go over teams real quick before we hop in to describe what we're gonna see. Alpha Guido is in charge of a squad on US, along with EFANC, Assault, and HML. Storm is commanding US forces this time around. And we have, on the insurgent side, we have Bump, X Gaming, Silas, and Dorf, along with Best Pony commanding. Now, the INS defense is going to be pretty strong. Hey, are you sure you're... They're sure allotted you're two Dishka techies, an SPG techie, sure and one Logi techie. And on top of that, they're allowed to scrounge all the motorcycles they can from the city. Bring them over here for a little enhanced mobility. And they're also able to run logistics for the jammer fob. The jammer fob is going to have a maximum of one mortar tube, four HMGs, and two static SPGs. 
along with fortifications, which include sandbags, wire, barbed wire, and uh, drum walls, bunker sort of sandbag emplacements, all that sort of thing. It's going to be a really tough nut to crack. The U.S. have a couple of different options on how to outfit their forces for this assault. In addition to their standard squads, they have a bunch of uh, additional or access to some specialist kits along with an option that gives them a uh, indirect fire base that they can deploy. So, so the standard kits for U.S. are each squad will have two FTLs, two ARs, and one GL along with a medic. And the option, the infantry option for US involves access to up to four additional GL kits or four breacher kits, two MG kits, and a forward observer kit. Now, the forward observer is mainly meant to help spot the mortar uh, tubes. And. That's the primary role for that guy. As you can see from this column, they have a few different types of trucks here. In the front of the column, they have two open top MRAPs, which is the main force protection for their convoy. And in the back, you see four covered trucks. Now, these are going to be two of these are transports, and two of them are logistical trucks. And since we can tell the U.S. have taken the infantry option this time. The two logistical trucks are going to be for the mortar base they're allowed to set up. The other option that U.S. could have taken, which we might see next round, involves a mechanized infantry option instead of the two logistical trucks and the mortar fob the U.S. could opt for three strikers. And strikers are, of course, powerful armored vehicles, multiple weapon types, can deal with enemy vehicle assets very easily, especially since we're talking about technicals and their paper-thin armor, or rather their lack of armor. In addition to their gunner position, doesn't actually put a put a soldier at risk. It's a crow's system mounted on the strikers, which is one of our glorious mod uh, modifications that we've done to the vanilla vehicles. The, the zoom are actually the zoom is actually different one of the one of the main fast one of the main foundations of squad ops operations are that uh, we discourage and we don't allow the use of optics on riflemen's uh, uh, guns the rifles and that extends that extends to vehicles like this that typically have like a four or five x scope or at least four or five X optics that are integrated into the sites. Uh, the optics on these guys have been powered down just a bit to make them A, more competitive, and uh, B, uh, more challenging for the gunner. And um, I'm being told that there are, there are 1.5 or two times scope or 1.5 to two times scopes on the uh, strikers here, but we won't see them this round. Uh, we might see them next round. We'll see. Mortars are generally very powerful options to take, and since both team has mortars, uh, it all comes down to who can get rounds on target the fir the fastest, the first. The most accurately.
I believe we're about, I think we're still about seven or eight minutes away from live time. Uh, every part of the operation begins with everyone getting in. And you can see that's happening here at U.S. base. Everyone is uh, getting in, getting organized. There's usually a group of players who are waiting for a brief. And then there are the commanders who are putting in uh, to a little bit more detail their plan with each other. And while the U.S. over here are still formulating a plan on how to attack, uh, let's check out INS's holdout position here in Village. INS players are starting to come in, and I believe that there are some more fortifications going down. And if I'm not mistaken, I heard that the U.S. plan is going to be to suffocate the, the supplies coming into the village as their first real tasking. And that's going to be key because the technical, it may not be able to carry much. The logic technical may not be able to carry much in the term, in the way of supplies, but every, every thousand supplies that it can bring in means that another building can be secured with sandbags, barbed wire means more rounds for the mortar. It means more, uh, HMG emplacements added. Let's take a look at all of the uh, various points of uh, attack here that U.S. could take for the village. Sorry, Assuming they're coming from the north or the west, you have these land bridges or the shallow parts of this river along with the actual bridges that are along the, uh, the main roads. There's three bridges to the northeast. They give access to this farmland here. And while they don't have, you can't exactly run off road here because of the walls, the roads are still pretty straight, which means vehicles can get plenty of time to spin up to full speed and they can loop around the other side of the village, get more room to run. And if you can encircle the village, it gives you a higher chance of securing any sort of assault vector. A more direct approach might be to use these land bridges. And these land bridges have a slight benefit of being closer to your objective, but they're wide open and vehicles won't be able to cross them so that means the infantry that are crossing them are going to have to do them by themselves by themselves in the open and they're just going to have to do a full out sprint to get to the other side to find some cover before they can compose themselves and actually get to the duty of uh clearing building to building like i said a straightforward operation, but not necessarily a simple one. I believe we heard that U.S. forces are consolidating for a platoon level brief. So we're going to go ahead over there and see if we can catch it real quick. I was checking a message, boys. All right, let's go. So, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. So, uh, today we are playing the U.S. side first, and uh, we have noticed that the INS forces have set up a jammer fob. If you'll look on your map, I've marked the location approximate of the jammer fob. It could be anywhere in the village area. It's very weak, uh, but it's a, still a little bit of an annoyance, and we want to take out any INS forces in the area. So what we're going to do, straight off of live, we're going to convoy the vehicles over to this bridge that I'm marking with the green fob marker. We're going to get over that bridge. The MRAPs are going to be in the lead, and what we're going to do is we're going to set up 
a mortar fob location on the red skull marker and we are going to take our infantry assets over onto this marksman mark now remember they're going to have uh, disco technicals along with SPG technicals so keep on the lookout for those as we're rolling up uh, the only ones that will be stopping at the uh, skull marker is assault squad everyone else including the MAPS is going to continue to move onto the assault point from that point we are going to uh, take a probably two pronged assault on the village location once we get our borders and HMD set up we will move up on uh, I would like to say this side of the road and just uh, basically breach and clear each building uh, GLs put your GLs in windows HMGs uh, spray them down if they're on the rooftops and mortars will be pounding them so uh, I'll give the go order when we're ready to move and uh, we'll get you guys all sorted out uh, basic chain command today is going to be four three two one so squad four lead all by three two and one hey my dude could you join squad four for me All right. Does anyone have any questions on what we're doing today? Who do you think should be get the most kills today? Any serious w. questions? Hopefully. Yeah, I have a question. Yep. What if we like put like maybe like a arc in the All right. So that's the US plan attack from the east, sweep into the south side of the village and go building to building. They're going to put on mortar fob. Let's check out the position where they're going to put their mortar fob. There's a little compound here next to a, next to a bridge. Northeast of the village. This is actually a really cool position to play around with. Maybe more than the mortar fob. Because the U.S. have access to maybe an HMG. They could put like a tripod guy like right here. They could do some... They could do some suppression... And on top of that, uh, give the mortar fob a little bit of defense against technicals. Because U.S. To, do not have light, you know, or, uh, light anti-tank units, which means that they, they have no ability to respond uh, destructively against any vehicle asset, aside from their MRAPs. And maybe uh, spamming a MRA or spamming a technical down with uh, the grenades from their uh, grenade launcher kits. The M203s. This compound is pretty close. I'd say it's probably within about uh, five or six hundred meters from this compound, it's located the center of this compound to the radio fob itself. Which means mortars are gonna have a, uh, they're gonna take a while to get there, but in the grand scheme of things, the delay wouldn't be that bad as we get a lifetime of about a minute and a half away. Let's take a look one last time at the, the INS defensive posture prior to live. Now they don't have our full platoon here. Their platoon will be off at their support base and they're gonna be rolling in along with all of their technical, offensive technical assets. And the, uh, I believe they have the logic truck actually here. Let's take a look at that. And this logic truck is already ready, ready to go. There's a driver in here, and he's and he's prepared to go back and uh, get more supplies immediately. And well, maybe a decoy play here, actually, because the compound with the fob in it has zero assets deployed to it and zero fortifications. 
And this is the compound that actually has fortifications. And unless I'm mistaken, I don't see any HMGs or mortar tubes yet. Ooh. And another thing to keep out for is INS have scouts, which means IEDs. And we're live. Yeah, let's see here. I'm looking for the IED. Hmm. I think it's in the middle of this guy right here. Oh, there it is. Duh. It's actually on a rock. Remember they have hat. Don't move too close to the buildings. So there you go. IEDs hidden on all of the land bridges. And we are live, by the way. So the U.S. Armored Platoon, or the U.S. Uh, infantry Platoon, they're moving out. They're just now made it to the south side of the river. And INS. Oh, they're sending. They're splitting their attack force up. Ooh, we could get some fireworks real early here. The technicals are moving to factory, while their infantry moves directly to village. The technicals at factory have dismounted, looks like maybe a squad. They have their SPGs along with their dishka, or their SPG along with their dishkas. They're going to use the walls at factory to help snipe targets. They're going to give them, it's going to give them plenty of cover. Looks like a squad lead is in the SPG technical. Two shielded uh, Dishkotekis might be positioning themselves to add some fire here. I have my one However, at this range and at this distance, I don't think they've seen the U.S. Uh, convoy. The U.S. convoy has already dismounted the mortar squad and they are now separating themselves. This is not the assault for the infantry. There's a bunch of trees and the building in the way, so I don't think that Dishka is going to have any, or the Dishka and the SPGs aren't going to have any effect. Oh, yeah, I see it. Strikers and trans. Confirm. MRAPs and trans. Yeah, I'm going to full trans. And we're getting word that INS know where the convoy is. Yeah, I, I the INS vehicles are still over at factory in far east. They haven't moved yet. The MRAPs and looks like about a squad in a transport are moving out to the south side of the main road that runs through village east to west. And here's dismounts here on the east side of the village, behind a building. The discas are moving out. The discas and the SPGs are moving west. A second transport comes in for US and they're gonna dis dismount over here uh, at the east side of the village. So far, the Lodgy for INS uh, hasn't been engaged. It's way far away. It's keeping about a 500 meter bubble around the U.S. forces right now, unknowingly. That's Gunnery Sergeant Rabbit in that lodgy. And the INS technicals, they are going through, back through all Basra. They're going to head out the south and they're going to use the main highway to probably get themselves south of village. And that main highway in the south has an embankment that's like... 10 meters gives them plenty of concealment as they move around and they're going to move south of it so unless there's a really keen eye for us i don't think they're going to be able to spot the uh, technicals behind them until it's too late the u.s assault squads they're moving 
to the small wall here southwest, or southeast rather, of the village. The first farm field they're going to cross, and they're crossing now. The additional infantry squads have arrived. The QRFs arrived for INS. Team down to your current position. Sounds good. Hey, Nordy, Kobe, come on. Grid for MRAP is Echo 87 Grid Square. I can't give an accurate one at the moment. Roger. There were two shots the, uh... And U.S. forces are engaging INS uh, spotter team. Oh, silence went down. Yeah, I'm just fucked up the uh, vehicle squad. Squad leads down. SPG down. We got two left. The techies. Do you want us to increase security on the east? side? Hey, I got a full U.S. squad moving up over here, uh, in my sector. Looks like one technic- looks like a technical made up the embankment and got popped immediately by an MRAP. Their SBG techie is down, which means that's their- that was their surefire, uh, insurance against a enemy vehicle. At least on the mobile front, so their two shielded Dishka techies remain bad planning bad bad thought there by the INS forces although at that range there's a really good shot by the US uh, by the USM rap looks like that was about a 500 meter shot U.S. forces closing within to within about 200 meters of con of uh, INS positions now, just using the shadow of buildings, and INS forces are doing their best to try to at least uh, halt the U.S. advance. And U.S. mortars, they're firing now. See if we get eyes on where these mortars land. And the U.S. mortars land about southeast of the water tower, or southwest of the water tower, directly south of the radio in the open. Maybe was trying to suppress some. INS forces that are moving out. They're readjusting to our south. They're in. They're in the compound C seven six one. C seven six one. They're now getting. They're. Re T761 copy. They're yeah, trying they're to get more shots. Trying to flank on the south side. US forces playing it smart. Bounding up by fire teams, by buddy teams. Going from cover to cover. Dr. Compton, I think, just killed a SL. He's got a great position here. His, uh... His bipod on this wall can cut off this entra the entrance to the compound in the... in... far over there. The MRAPs are... The U.S. MRAPs are supporting the ooh, supporting the infantry push from behind, but the INS uh, INS technicals they've moved back to Al Basra, and 
They are at the main overpass on the eastern, uh, the western side of the city. They've dismounted troops. And there's two Latin units with these guys. So they've moved a fire team over here. I think the fire team is going to start pushing across the desert here to try to get closer to the MRAPs. The technicals are queuing. Looks like they're waiting for a moment to push out here. U.S. forces are making it really close here. The southern push is directly across the street. There's a squad getting supported by an MRAP that is directly across the street from the main village area. You can kind of see them here. The, the field gives them great concealment, however, uh, coming out of it is going to be the big problem. Once they hop the hill right here next to this little wall, it's going to be all, their protection is going to be all on them. And INS forces are playing this pretty defensively. Uh, and here south, comes U.S. smokes. It's not close. It's Let driving away from you. They're going to smoke off this main wall, yeah. the main uh, road over here on the west. They're throwing like seven or eight smokes now. And INS are throwing grenades, uh, anticipating U.S. forces moving across. Ooh. And yeah, uh, there you go. Squad lead two is down along with maybe one other member of his squad died to a grenade. And an FTL is taking over for two, the U.S. Squad 2 now, and they're trying to get a better position. They're going to use the smokes to their advantage here. The smokes are blowing east, and here we go. U.S. forces coming across. Wait, which MRAP is it? The one over here by me. And the U.S. forces have made it north of the road, but they're getting shot at. Hey, command, we have ammo now. 75 at the breach of in the wall. Yeah, yeah, I need them. Nade out. U.S. forces not having a great yeah. amount of success here, trying to push to the south side of the village. Get in here, get in, uh, get in. I think an MRAP just popped. We're gonna have to stay here. Watch, watch. Yeah, an MRAP just popped. I'm not sure what that was. I think it was a rocket shot because that was definitely not loud enough to be a mine, in my opinion. The INS more U.S. mortars coming in. I think they may have landed central to the compound. More more mortars are coming in though. Mortar's doing some damage to some sandbags around the radio compound, but nothing much else. No INS infantry in the area. There's not really a lot of INS support. There's about a maybe a half a squad plus near the radio. 
Even the HMG at the... Oh, no. The MRAP. The MRAP gets popped up. Gets popped. Gets destroyed by the technicals along with their uh, light assault squad here. Right now we're looking at 14 kills for US, 14 kills for INS. So it's still pretty even. Even though US have lost their mobile assets. And now... Oh, what a shot! One of the one of the technicals begins engaging the uh, We're trapped in this building here for now. Yep, this whole bunch the US squad three, two and someone turns around and Copy. drops it. Be advised we have guys on our south and I have heavy contact about fifty. Oh it was storm. So he was able to shoot past the shield because the shield the, the shield of the Dishka wasn't even aiming in his direction. Wow. It's kind of a sad thing that uh, none of the none of the INS over there saw him. Oh, maybe they did. Someone looked like they were gonna peek this position, but I don't think they can actually see him because of that wall in the way. But Storm's paying attention to his behind. RPG peeking through the top window. Oh, that light, the light guy in the window can almost see Storm. I bet you if he leaned left. Squad 2 for US finally moving out. They're right inside. They're in there. They're in there. Yeah, that's what I've been telling you I'm gonna throw a I'm gonna throw a frag. Oh! Back to back. The light unit shot a frag rocket, killed swine. I need a medic. Oh, shit. I need and a medic. one person is holding off squad two from assaulting. We don't have one. He's got a PPSH and he's covering the door. Reloads a drum mag. The mortar fob for U.S. have disengaged there from the mortar fob, and they're moving in on foot. Another frag rocket. Storm gets hit by a frag rocket, and now he's taking rocket rifle fire, and he goes down. The light unit from behind. More U.S. Uh, mortars, actually. So they left the fire team behind at the mortar. Now the light unit from behind just firing frags. And squad two's remaining FTL goes down. They have no more command comms. Say again? Switch the issue. Looks like the southern push has gone through, has gone badly. Meanwhile, the northern push is they're using the riverbank to push ahead. Ooh. Oh, this is not looking good for me. That's yeah, dangerous. I, if you fall in the water here, you yeah. drown. Basically, guinea pig. Making sure that everything's passable. Phew. If you fall in the water here and your head goes below water, you, you start taking damage. Uh, it's a game mechanic. My apologies. And wow. That's tremendous. That a, they were able to do that. Because look at that. Look at the, It's like a sheer. Look at that. 
Now, this is gonna be, this is gonna have some surprise involved. And yep, they're gonna go ahead and get in the compound. There's only one person in this compound here. And I guarantee you this person is even looking. Now, he's definitely gonna be able to hear something now. Uh, we got unman HMG here. But doesn't appear to have heard anything. Watch out. Oh, maybe now. Roger. He's just going to defend his out. building. U.S. actually oh, now inside village proper. Sir. Now inside a compound. Right, Update on kills. 19 kills for U.S., 19 kills for INS. So still even. And the light unit from behind is able to swing around. They're beginning to take out the remnants of Squad 2 here. But, and that's a, sounded like a mine. Copy that. Just hold. We're going to try to sweep west and cut south and link up with you. A mine or an IAD. Yeah, we're going to try to get trying to get close. You good? And there's a trade there. So now, Dick's Folk. But squad four is the last person in the south where assault begins leading through going compound to compound he loses a member of his team and the light you know up here bleeds out oh, that's, that's kind of funny. And they're clearing building to building. Oh, and there's a squad lead here on the window, on the stairs. Who is this? This is, uh, oh, if I get my buttons to work right. This is Dorf. And gets seen and shot immediately. I think that's coming, that's coming from the south. That's coming from the south. Yeah, that was, that was a south shot. If, the, if this U.S. squad can stay consolidated enough and keep moving, they have a real chance. There's a fire team that's moved back to defend the radio, and there's one guy watching the front entrance, and he drops one. That's Mr. Money Man. Mr. Money Man uh, shoots through this uh, doorway here and catches a lead element of the uh, U.S. squad. Meanwhile, some more breach and clear teams from INS. They're trying to find Dick's folk. And they found him. Dick's folk not able to shoot around the corner accurately enough. And the southern U.S. push is gone officially. One squad inside, more mortars coming out for U.S. U.S. mortars on target. Some of them are a little long. U.S. may not be able to tell. INS unit actually sneaks into the compound here, ends up trading. How about it's that compound clear, Compton? More mortars. Another guy. Inside the compound, there we go. And assault squad is stalled. Uh oh. Two tubes. Two tubes overcorrected. And here comes a fight, building to building. Compton gets shot from a window. The U.S. assault squad is now down to two, three. Copy. All right. Well, can we can us. we see the truck, please? Yes. Take a truck over. I'm gonna try to get the other two friendlies over here first, um, and then we'll all push in. 
and I suppose those last mortar shots may have been the end of their usefulness. The U.S. mortar team is leaving the mortars, finally. There's only three people there. So, six on the assault now. You want to try to stick to the road to our east? And they're going to take a transport, or they're going to take their lodgy, I think. Push. Tiny bit. Yeah, they're going to take their lodgy from the assault base. I think they're going to... They're gonna try to link up with uh, the assault squad here, the U.S. assault squad, the rest of them, and try to push in. Yep, here they go. I wonder if they're gonna hit a mine. Uh, I believe there's about 12. Oh, let's see here. If they turn, no, they're just gonna dismount here. Okay. So no chance for this lodgy hitting a mine. Let's see if we can count how many uh, INS are remaining. One. Two, three. There we go. Just getting my. There we go. Six. Ten. Yeah, twelve. So I'm counting twelve INS remaining. And there's actually an INS guy here. He's he's prone inside this house. He's never left. Second floor. And the mortar guys have found up. Ooh, someone's sneaking around. This is uh, Nordy Land. Oh, facing us. All right, let's move. And here we go. The U.S. force is going to go across the street. I know sweep team. Atomic Peach makes it across, but an uh, INS unit makes it on you. top of a roof. One goes down. And I think Peach is able to take him out. Above me? Yep. So then there's one INS unit behind. And another, uh, that's the Peggy, or the someone, it's with a T in the name, that's gone down. I think we're down to three U.S. forces left here. Peach throwing grenades up. Oh! Uh, INS grenade lands right smack dab in the middle of this opening and takes out two. Why is it just me? God damn it. So now it's just down to Peach. And he cut, he jumps out of the window there towards the radio compound, but doesn't make it very far. GG is called, and that's round one. An INS victory. A pretty secure one. About a squad's difference in life there. 25 kills for US to 33 kills for INS. Yeah, that's a, that's a margin of eight. Right? Yeah, that's a margin of eight. I can do math. But that's round one. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with round two in just a moment. But uh, if you take the time to give us a subscription or, or, follow, or sub or follow our uh, Twitch and YouTube channels, that'd be appreciated. What happened? For more information and links to those, squadops.gg. We'll be back in a moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming out to SOTT Basic. I'm your instructor today, Hammering Hutch. You guys can simply just call me Hutch. When we are suppressing an enemy target, the whole intent of this is to keep the enemy's head down so an adjacent unit can maneuver onto them. During this process, we have a thing that happens automatically and organically, whether it be with buddy teams or fire teams. The whole intent is to ensure there's no lull in the gunfire, thus talking guns. Open fire. Contact front. Alpha bound. I'm up. He sees me. 
I'm down. Bravo, bound. I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. All right, Bravo set. Alpha, up. He sees me. I'm down. You're now in what is known as a file. You're now in what is known as a staggered column and usually used when on patrol or when moving from one location to another where contact is imminent. And these are a few of the basic formations that we use during squad ops. The SOTT Advanced Weapon Systems course was created to ensure squad ops participants share the same knowledge and understanding of the use and applications of mission-specific weapons and the basic tactics involved in their deployment. The Automatic Rifleman. The Automatic Rifleman is the foundation of a fire team and or squad. The job of the Automatic Rifleman is to deliver a high volume of prolonged, effective, suppressing fire on enemy positions to allow the maneuver of friendly units during offensive operations and the repelling of enemy attacks in defensive operations. The Grenadier, a key member of the fire team and squad, the Grenadier is first and foremost a rifleman who is capable of delivering accurate fire of both high explosive and smoke rounds on point and area targets at varying distances. One of the other added benefits of the Grenadier is to engage dead space, which is essentially an area that cannot be hit by direct fires. The Light Anti-Tank Gunner. Soldiers carrying light anti-tank weapons are, just as Grenadiers, riflemen first. They are the ideal infantry-based counter to both lightly armored and thin-skinned vehicles. At short, medium, and far distances, the rockets fired are a viable weapon against groups of infantry as well. The SOTT Advanced Weapon Systems course, although not a requirement, is highly encouraged for squad ops participants to join to expand their knowledge of how to utilize the tools that are given to us within squad.
Welcome back to Squad Ops One Life Events. Operation Rawhide, round two, set to begin shortly. Uh, if you missed round one, thanks for joining us. I'm B Car, and uh, Shattered Ritual is our multicam producer for today. Operation Rawhide is an attack defense scenario. The INS are holding a village, as you can see here. And in this village, they have a radio jammer. And the U.S. are quite fed up with this uh, sh with this uh, radio blocking shenanigans. And they're going to make a rather large assault, or they're going to uh, deploy a platoon to assault this whole area and clean it out. The objective for INS is to keep the radio shenanigans alive. Because why not? They're insurgents. They're they're gonna do insurgency shit. Let's take a look at our uh, squads real quick. Uh, our teams. Uh, from round one, everyone's now switched teams. So now you can see that uh, Bump is in command of squad one. X Gaming Twenty Two, Dorf, and Silas are also squad leading, and their commander is Best Pony. For, that's on the U.S. side, in blue, and insurgents in red will be assault, efank, HML, the Alpha Guido, uh, and storm. Storm will be commanding INS forces this round. The U.S. forces last round attempted a east and south push, simultaneous push on the objective, on the village. And uh, let's just say they weren't entirely entirely successful with that. Yeah, I'll just get my shit oh, crud. After. U.S. is briefing right now. Uh, let's go over there and uh, take it's a listen. There's the Anthem right now. We haven't done anything yet. The start of the <laughs> I was gonna say, you I was gonna catch that dude. That was the Russian anthem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, anyways. All right. Greetings, American soldiers. I am your platoon leader, Michael Dukakis. No. Too old of a reference. Ah, so funny. Anyways, <laughs> look, here's how we're going to do this. We're going to mount up a whole platoon in all of these nice mechanized vehicles in the MRAP. Then we're going to engage in a blitz that will make the Germans jealous. We're going to rush the vehicles as fast as we can off live across the bridge in Delta 6. We're going to blitz through the echo column, eliminating any hostile reinforcements attempting to make their way to the village. Uh, since, you know, the fastest route's going to be using that paved road, and I anticipate meeting them there, since we're about a kilometer and 200 meters away from that, and it'll take them, you know, they're about like 900 meters, 1.2 kilometers away from that too. So we'll, we'll meet them on the way, wipe out the reinforcements. From there, after we cut the enemy reinforcements to the village and cut their logistics runs too, we move the strikers and the people over here to that final fob marker in Delta 8. We dismount the squads, we do a nice platoon line, uh, squad, you know, one on the left, squad, uh, what squad is Silas? Silas is four, so squad three on the right, squad two in the middle. We use the overwhelming firepower of our 50 caliber weapons, both from the MRAPs and from the, the strikers, 
to eliminate enemy forces inside the, the village who are trying to suppress us as we move up on top of them. And we clear them out house by house, room by room once we get there. If, uh, and there almost certainly will be, so that's plan on this, if there are enemy vehicles that are trying to attack us from behind, one striker will turn around and uh, deal with that. Or perhaps two strikers will turn around and deal with that if it's especially severe, uh, while the rest of us you know, proceed with our mission. Uh, if we happen to arrive too soon, say we arrive in like Echo 7, and the enemy forces, the reinforcements trying to get to this village are still stuck in like Box 9 or something, and so they end up getting stuck outside the city, we'll probably devote all of the 50 cals to preventing them from making inroads towards us while the infantry just advances on foot. Does that make sense, everyone? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Ten for motherfucker. Great right. strategy, man. All right. I love you. <laughs> the the order. Oh, We're gonna go striker M rap striker M rap striker. Roger. Cool. Yeah. All right. Any wanna... questions, comments, concerns? Do you want to mention the budget? So Pony thinks he can beat the INSQRF to the village. Hmm. I don't know what to think about that. However, as you heard, the U.S. are going to take the mechanized option this time, which means some of them are going to have to take crewman kits. As you can see here, Ricochet Man's a crewman. Silas is taking a crewman squad lead kit. Zaki 98. Yeah, so it looks like almost the entire squad is taking crewman kits here. And that's important because you gotta have crewmen to drive and gun the strikers. Now, these strikers, like we mentioned earlier, have reduced magnification from their vanilla from their vanilla brethren. But they're still just as important and powerful in this map. Mechanized option will give US three of them. However, they won't have mortars this round. So they have their two uh, MRAP open tops. They'll have two transports, and they'll have three strikers. And they won't have much in the way of additional infantry support, as in they won't have the additional uh, rolls for additional GLs or additional breachers or anything like that. They'll just get three strikers. Meanwhile, the INS are the INS squad that's stationed at the village Jammer Fob have begun deploying. Let's take a look at their initial deployment. The radio is going to be closer to the water tower in the central in the center of the village. This is also a really good building to put it in, too, because think about it. The only way into this building, into into the room where the radio is, involves an external staircase, which you can cover from any given position around the thing. Plus, you also have to consider this room that has whole, that has little windows. Someone can just easily watch you the door right here. Not to mention, you can have someone watching the staircase. You can have an additional person watching the staircase. Ooh, take a look. Oh, wow. INS deploying an SPG, a static SPG gun. Right on top of the building here. I'm not entirely sure if I agree with the way it's positioned because think well, look at it you can only aim the thing with about maybe 15 to 20 uh yeah it's it's about 30 degree maybe 50, 20 to 30 degrees of movement left or right the whole cone so they've pretty much aimed it at um this build this two-story building and maybe a little bit left maybe a little bit right Looks like left, they can aim it all the way to, to where the radio tower is, and on the right, maybe they can aim it to one of those trees. Uh, I don't know about this. 
it's actually kind of funny. It's gotten a lot more depression than I think it probably deserves, but whatever. Now we're getting into the realm of opinion. And let's see if there's any indirects. No mines or IEDs yet placed for the INS forces. INS uh, squad lead is beginning to put down bar uh is beginning to put down plans for sandbags and we get a lifetime of 30 seconds now pony's entire plan involves beating the ins reinforcements to the village and for that he wants to take the most direct route possible which i believe tur means turning right out of spawn going straight south across the roads so let's follow the let's follow the uh the infant the mechanized column here and see what happens as we go live so the mechanized column consists of striker mrap striker mrap striker and they're not going to turn directly south we're not worrying about spectators at the moment here we go have we updated the drivers on the new route? Why are they... What? Uh, okay, are they just gonna like, go off-road right here? What? They're gonna go further east? They're gonna take the road? They're gonna go through the checkpoint? Why would you do that? The checkpoint takes forever to go through. You have to actually brake. You can't go through the checkpoint at full speed. That's the point. They're going towards the city center. Thanks, sign. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is gonna be hilarious. Why? Why? At least they go around the checkpoint. Oh. Uh, they're gonna go up the road? Why are they went? <laughs> what is going on? Meanwhile, INS are already at Village. Okay, now we're playing bumper cars. There is an SPG that's out way south of the Village. They've dismounted. So I think the SPG is holding a southern sort of... Uh, Info position here more than anything. I'm not sure if an SBG can outright destroy a striker. I would imagine SBG can outright. De oh, and they see the logic truck. And they're going to shoot at the logic truck. Logic truck almost eats it. Enemy logic was to the southwest. And I think a striker sees the logic truck. Logic truck actually gets what? The logic truck is still up. I think the driver just bailed because he has to bandage himself. Wow. Logic truck almost popped. Look how smoky it is. And now we're going to take a look at the SPG that's in the south. Let me see if I can find it real quick here. Oh, yeah, it's right next to the power lines. They've got a squad lead out here, which is an odd allocation for someone. I would have rather seen someone not in command. So a squad lead is taking the SPG techie. Silas, you should be covering the other oh, they're shooting rounds. Uh, let's see here. This is the Alva Guido, and I'm not quite sure. It's Gerwolf in the gun. So Alva Guido trying to find Gerwolf a good place to shoot at. Meanwhile, the entire U.S. infantry has dismounted. And Gerwolf switches rounds again. I think he might uh, be trying to get a shot on a... Uh... The wall. 
Oh, on an M wrap. That's coming. And hold. Oh, I bet you he sees that striker. Or maybe not. He's got frag rounds, baby, loaded right now. Groove overshoots the MRAP. And uh, Striker begins engaging. Light blue against the uh, power line, uh, dark rusted red. It's uh. A, it's not really good for camouflage and cover. B, it's a really great reference for U.S. forces to just return fire on your position. And, you know, the, the SPG's got to try some hit-and-run tactics here. Meanwhile, U.S. forces begin receiving fire at range at about medium range here. We're close to within about 100 meters of the village. And now the strikers are going to have to provide some cover here. The strikers and the MRAPs. U.S. forces spread out pretty far. And there's definitely some chances for him here to get in really close. Bravo, move to me. Bravo, move to me. So Sonny, far... don't go to me. Don't, don't come to me, Sonny. Copy. We see some Stay bounding normal. going on. You guys are going to die. They're trying to spread themselves out. They had an idea for a platoon line. I think it was like one, two, and three. So they're online, relatively speaking. They just need a little bit more cover. Oh, I believe the striker is taking some shots at the at a vehicle that's inside village, and the striker is uh. Shooting anything that has a skylining silhouette. Oh, Dishkateki inside the village is shooting at the striker. Yep, two just hold that northern section. We have a couple of MRAP coming along the top. Dishka lands a few hits on the striker. Not a lot of effect. SPG, meanwhile, has taken a position behind the entire U.S. Uh, front. And I believe he's taking the shot. And the SPG is going to get back on the south side of the embankment here. I thought it was dead. I thought he was dead. I'm talking about it and placed us. Losing cover now. As they get closer to the top of the embankment, and the SPG is going to take another shot here, I think. We have one SPG or down. They're looking for vehicles. Okay. You can just barely make out that there's a. Oh, he takes a shot. I think he overshot it. Yep, overshot the MRAP again. Oh, and the SPG Techie's gonna run straight into a striker. Run. Wish I had a soundboard so I can play that on, on demand. Striker is still. must be looking for the SPG Techie. SPG Techie's bugging out west as fast as it can. Oh, yep, and the SPG Techie's been found, and it's lining up for a shot on the striker, and it undershoots, and there goes, oh, Gerwolf gets shot out in the middle of reloading. Now Afa Guido's gonna have to solo that SPG. SPG Techie uh, proceeds south of the embankment of the main highway. Meanwhile, Striker's now finally starting to push in here. And they've spotted the second technical. 
So that's all of the technical, uh, the Dishkotechies rather, that US, or that INS had. I wonder if there's any, been any mortar shots. Oh! Striker got hatted. What a shot. What's the plan here? Cats at that range are definitely not easy feats to... That's about a 100 meter shot. Could have been a 100 plus meter shot and with a hat with a drop like it is. It's... You can zero it, but... They're throwing smokes to the south right now. Ooh, that was quite the shot to take. They're slowly pushing up. Uh, five kills for US now, five kills for INS. So, the, the pacing of the beginning assault continues to be very even. Now this uh this striker yeah, appears to be smoky. Like Maybe the SPG actually hit it. Isn't this striker south? Yeah. SPG is still south. Of course, this is Alpha Guido. It's been it's the it's it, it's been hit. Alpha Guido jumps back on the gun. SPG technical looking for looking for targets. Overshoots a striker. He's gonna commit to taking a second shot. The striker is turning around looking. The striker doesn't see him. He's gonna aim a little bit lower. The striker's moving up. I think he overshot the striker again. And you can definitely see Alpha Guido getting hit there. So he's gonna try to move out of the way. Striker returning fire, hits the SPG or something. Oh, it's burning. He's gonna have to ditch it. And Alpha Guido now stranded on the south side of town. As the SPG techie will inevitably pop here. Let's go back and take a look and see. Oh, the striker. The striker that was shooting them actually popped. Why was, was, was it? It got rear shot. It must have been rear shot. But what a shot it is to make! Look at, look at, look at. There's a wall in the way. There's two trees. There's concealment, even though it's not really concealment for our vehicle that size. But it puts his ass towards the village and decides it wants to die. And it got shot in the rear. Best guess is the rocket came from over here. On the uh, the east side of village, let's see if I can see who it was. It might have been. Uh, it might have been Quick Scratch here. Wow, so many vehicles lost for U.S. They've lost another M ramp. They have one M ramp and one striker remain. And the last striker now taking a look. Seven kills for US, 11 kills for INS. US forces not really picking up any steam on this assault here. Pony is probably one of the, part of one of the, oh, maybe not. Looks like they've surged a squad and a half to the east and they've gotten into a compound that's pretty close. And pizza delivery guy, AR, throws some shots through his murder hole here. They know infantry's there. He actually almost gets a hit on one. 
He's continually needs to suppress the hole. I think a lat unit wants to try to shoot a frag rocket up here. If we could push that Here's some GLs coming out too. It would be brilliant. Just like uh we are airborne suggesting if they were able to get in this compound right here, that would be a big coup for this east attack. And uh oh. Looks like you can't push too far north here. Multiple KIA for US here. And Dorf giving some assistance here, giving some additional calls to Axe. Axe has his squad hold up in here. I think the MRAP's beginning to lose its usefulness. No one's really peeking it. Matter of fact, the gunner's not really looking in the right direction either. Wait, who's this? Why is there... Storm! The... The INS command is actually outside of the base? I think he's... He's covering for Alpha Guido, is what's happening. He's covering Alpha Guido, running back, and Alpha Guido actually is running really close to some U.S. forces right now. He's got his gun out. Oh, uh, He's got his gun out. He's switching to a grenade. He wants to throw one. No, he's switching to the scopes. He sees U.S. forces here. Uh, he takes his gun back out. He shoots out to long, to to own lamb, and uh, Apa and lawn darts run over here. Ponies actually were part of this group, I think. I think some blind grenades, and now Alpha Guido decides it's time to run again. Story of his life this round. Uh, Pony, U.S. command, meanwhile. Meanwhile, is uh, pushed by himself up here as rockets and GLs fly every which way. And here comes INS mortars. Let's see if I can find where they're shooting from. Are they in this combat? Yep, there it is. Almost directly vertically. Uh, this is BBD Runner. Ooh, in the compound, uh, in the compound near where the U.S. forces were, just was well, just one round. Storm and uh, Alpha Guido are running away. Uh, Apa and Lawn Darts are approaching from the uh, the river. Let's see. More mortars against U.S. forces. Following lawn darts. A little, uh, a little behind though. The mortars were a little late. And Pony decides to run across the road and uh, die. So U.S. command is dead. The U.S. Eastern push has made it to that compound. They have a foothold in the village now, and they're taking the minus with them. GLs and smoke starting to go out. And if they're not, if they're not careful here, ooh, a frag rocket. And a grenade kills two. General Adin and pizza delivery guy. And if these mortars were targeted this compound, cover that door. Cover that door. Meta kill me. Which they weren't. Mortars are still chasing lawn darts on the other side Shit, of the village. Those guys went down over here. Wow. We need support in this compound right now. We're about to. We're about to lose it. 14 kills for US and 19 kills for INS. INS starting to get a little lead here. US forces running into a field that is being covered. And some U.S. forces from the south actually push in. Phoenix, along with Bagger Joe, and this is Ben. Ooh! 
Nasty. Holy pull shit. Back, pull back. He gets two there. Light unit is still up. And they're trying to add a frag over there. Above. Ben, if you got a frag, do it. Oh, Ben goes up on the second floor. This could be deadly. He's a GL. No, he gets shot up from the opposite crew. That secondary and that swine over there. That secondary building next to the uh, radio has proven itself useful. U.S. forces getting really close now. And the striker. The striker halts. Uh, no mines or IEDs for the vehicles to worry about, according to the map. And the striker... Mortar's coming out. I think they're still chasing Londard. And then he shoots the volley and he gets off of Mortar. So let's see if we can figure out where these guys are going to land. The Mortars are going to hit us if you don't push in. So they aim for the land bridge. Uh, Lundart and Epa, by the way, they're getting really close to being a significant problem for INS to deal with. Very little in the way means of defense that are deployed here to the west side of the village. And Lundart's the master. You don't, you you don't underestimate him. Advise four went down. Dorf's remainder of his squad is now pushed in. Oh, what is this bag of Joe? Back of Joe uh, secures the building. That was kind of funny. He was like crawling around the corner. He didn't hear the U.S. guy reloading his gun. Something tells me the striker is now being soloed as I think Sonny got dropped here out of it. I could be wrong. Sonny taking some shots at the radio compound. And U.S. forces continuing to push west. And INS back on the mortars. INS still shooting east with the mortar. Or west with the mortar. So, wasting rounds. U.S. forces getting stalled out again. Oh, that's just poor. You see the mortars land about 300 meters off in the distance. No clue what they're mortaring. Okay, two's here. USGL is proving to be ammo. a problem now. They're trying to put a GL through the window where the radio is. They're getting really close to putting it through the door, and that can actually injure this, uh, this lat guy right here. That's Jake Carranza Jones. And they're gonna smoke it off. That's smart. Look at how that landed. That's brilliant. Because the way that the smoke GL is working in squad, that's a vertical column of smoke. And that completely blocks that doorway. That's really smart. All right, let's get an update on kills. 22 for US, 23 for INS. US bringing it back. U.S. force is now fighting building to building. Lawn darts the master crawls up, and he's gotten really close here. It's a rider, and he's calling out to uh, he's calling out to Appa that they're right nade, there. Nade, nade. Lawn darts drops one. U.S. crossing the uh, the internal road here. They're gonna get really close. Kobe throws a grenade in. Well, I think it bounced off a wall. Shit. Not the bounce he wanted it to take, but. Yep, and there's someone that's actually hurt. Kobe jumping in. How ironic that Kobe threw a bad name. Just missed him going around the corner. Kobe is still breaching and clearing. And he's going to get him in the behind. Just in time as a friendly was crossing in front of the window. I'm going to bleed out. I need a bleed out. Uh-oh. Come here, come here. Someone going to bleed out? That's not good. No, 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 I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I need a bandage. And, uh, there we go. I don't wanna die. I don't wanna die. X throwing a grenade into the compound with the, uh, mortars. Gets die. one. <laughs> May have injured another. No, he gets two! Look at that! 
He got a guy that was almost around the corner. That was a squad lead. Uh, can I see what it is? No, I missed it. And U.S., you're getting really close to uh, securing the objective here. The striker just moves right on in. It wants to. Uh, it wants to get in the party. There's not. I don't see a lot of Latin units left. There's, the only Latin unit I see is over in the western compound. And oh, there's actually. There's actually one on the radio. There is one inside the building where I'm shooting. Go for it. Go for it. There is one up here. Alpha Guido running all the way back, and he's on the radio. Jake Carranza Jones, a Latin unit. Meanwhile, a Western push. They're clearing the wrong compound. Axe Gaming goes down. But significant INS losses. 33 kills for US, 25 kills for INS. We're down to three INS remaining, I think. Nope. The GL goes through the window and takes out Jake Carranza Jones and Alpha Guido. It's one INS remaining now. And he's in the wrong compound. Oh, with the rocket! Rocket hits the side armored, but it was a lat rocket, not a hat rocket. Lighter rocket doesn't do it against the side armor of the striker. And the striker puts some suppression. Oh, he's dead. Is he dead? No, he's just, uh, he's just, he's looking down the stairs. That was a shot by the Bartok warrior. The rem last remaining INS soldier up, I believe. Yep. And the U.S. have now found the radio. Clear, 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 front. Dorf is calling radio on him. Dorf and Mick now clear in the area. And that's the radio. Now it's all up to the Bartok warrior, who is just defending his position. It's not really a good place to be, too, because look at it. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't see you from a position quite like this, and you would see his weapon just barely, though. And that about wraps it up for this round. It's just a formality at this point, in my opinion. Unless Spartak Warrior goes like 9-0 and also has another AT rocket magically come out of nowhere. But yeah, so U.S. significantly uh, winning here. One, two, three, four, seven, seven plus someone, plus someone. I think there might actually be two people in the striker. Yeah, so the striker is fully crewed. So that's nine U.S. remaining, including a striker. They lost a significant amount of. What? Yeah, is one more than the INS had remaining last time. So, US definitely able to shoot straight and uh, get some real uh, shots on target here. INS mortars not effective this time. They were using it to chase two people up a. Uh, oh, here we go. Up the up the uh, river. Now Kobe. Yep, yep, beginning yep. to uh, make a make a you push here. All right, we need to push. Uh, I think I will drop from the... Bottom is there. Oh, and Londart's gonna search the bottom. Viet Cong right behind him, and here comes Kobe. Not looking. No, he uh, he's looking now, nope. but he's blind. Bartok on right, full auto there. there. I guess it's necessary it's now. Yeah, Bartok it's switching it's angles. And relay. Shoots Londarts in the back of the head. He's reloading. Next one up. Not able to do it. And Bagacho takes down the last remaining INS, and that's GG for round two. A US victory. And with a significant with a pretty comfortable margin between them with a with a with a striker at the end. So kudos to Best Pony. And we thanks to everyone that came out to participate. And, you know, if you'd like to participate in future guys, events like this, uh... <laughs> go to squadops.gg and uh, sign up for basic SOTT. We're serving it, I think, eight more times this month, including today. So, you know, sign up for that.
Also, please uh, consider following and subscribing to our YouTube channel and our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash squad ops and youtube.com slash squad ops for access to when we go live and VODs for events like this. Uh, for Shadow Ritual Producing, I'm B Carr. Uh, we'll see you tonight for another operation. Yep, and tonight we're playing Operation Jackal. So if you'd like to come uh, see that, just uh, follow and sub for the notification on when we go live. But until then, take care.